those future ordinary dividends, which is uh, very interesting. And then, of course, we've also heard the buyback program being announced, the on-market share buyback by Qantas of up to $366 million. So this is really what we're talking about with our guest host this morning in studio with me, Mark Bailey from Fix Securities. Mark, interesting that we've also seen this buyback program being announced from, from Telstra. Um, you've actually got a chart for us that you're going to bring up, and I want you to just kind of put it into context in terms of where we are sitting at the, in the cycle. Sure, absolutely. So this, this is a credit cycle. It's a standard um, you know, cycle. It takes, usually takes around about six or seven years to go around from kind of bust through boom and then back to bust. It's probably been elongated this time in terms of the central bank's action in terms of additional liquidity. Uh, so it starts in, in, in phase one um, where you've got low profitability, the focus is on balance sheet repair after the bust. So that's beneficial for credit investors, not so good for equities because they don't get um, the dividends. In phase two, it's the holy grail, profitability is increasing uh, rapidly. Credit spreads tighten, so it's positive for credit investors, but also equity investors get the dividends. Now, the phase three is what we're seeing at the moment, and probably a bit beyond, but in terms of the actions from Telstra uh, and also Qantas in terms of those uh, share buybacks and dividends to try and boost the, the equity price and give uh, equity investors that... Uh, that uh, return that they're looking for. Not so good for credit investors because it's cash leaving the business. It's probably increasing leverage. Other, other signs of um, activity in that corporate action in that, in that phase are debt financed uh, emerges and acquisitions. And I think we're probably almost into phase four where you're seeing you know, that bust scenario. Equities are really, really priced to perfection. There's concerns about valuations. Um, interesting, we're already seeing higher default rates coming through in, in credit, so you, but you're not seeing those, um, those impacting spreads and yields. Um, people and investors are still chasing those at the moment. So at the moment, I think we're between that phase three and phase four, and that's why I'm you know, talking to our clients and saying, look, you should be positioned defensively in whichever asset class you are, and I'm between asset classes as well to, to prepare for a potential correction in the equities, which will also impact the credit markets as well. Yeah, well, just on that potential cor correction in equities, we've obviously been seeing the equity market and the bond market moving in tandem with each other, this sort of upward momentum, which is not something you typically see. Are you concerned that we'll also see a correction then in, in the bond market? Yeah, look, there's, there's been a lot higher correlation between bonds and equities than we've seen in any time in, in, in historical um, records. And I think that's largely driven by, you know, the central banks. What will happen is, you know, you, you'll see an equity correction, but I think you'll still see safe haven buying. What this crisis has taught me over the last 10 years or so is it's almost irrelevant what the underlying yields are. And let's not forget, it's about a third of the developed markets bond uh, government bond markets in negative yield. I think it's about 14 trillion worth of bonds are in negative yield. And if you'd asked people 10 years ago whether that would be the case, they would have thought you were crazy. Mm. But that's that's the situation that we're in. And so I think in terms of if there is an equity market correction, people will naturally go and buy sovereign bonds, US treasuries, and those safe haven assets and drive those yields down even lower as it's a place to store and preserve capital. And maybe, yes, you do lose a bit of capital in terms of um, you know, some of those negative yields that you're buying if you hold to maturity. But if you're only losing you know, half a percent compared to maybe 10, 15, 20 percent that you may lose in the equity market sell-off, it's still a relatively safe asset class to be in and that's what investors uh, are, are being kind of driven towards and are focusing on in terms of uh, you know trying to protect their portfolios at the moment. We talk a lot about a lot of cash sitting on the sidelines at the moment and at some point I guess that's going to come back into the market. Are you investing at the moment and where are you finding good sort of opportunities? Look I think there's good opportunities in corporate bonds. Mm -hmm. um, you know at the moment our investors that have a preference for uh, fixed rate uh, corporate bonds. Um, in terms of where we're guiding investors, I would certainly say in terms of your asset allocation mix, and the asset allocation mix in Australia is completely wrong. There's only Australia, Poland and Korea that have got less than 10% of their super funds, pension funds allocated in bonds. The next country up is Finland that's got 30%. So in terms of if the equity market was to correct, Australia along with uh, Poland and Korea would be the most hit from an equity market correction and less protected. So I think the biggest driver for returns is asset allocation. And um, you, know, you wouldn't expect me to say anything else, but I, I think a, a bigger portion of Australian super funds should be in fixed income and bonds. And within the bond sector, I would say, look, default rates are increasing. Credit spreads are probably likely to be a bit wider in the second half of this year into 2017. Position yourself more defensively. 
So either up the investment grade spectrum into the more double A, single A category from the triple B, and in the high yield spectrum, more towards the double B in terms of the better credit quality. But again, it depends on what, what other assets you've got in your portfolio. Sure. Um, and also moving from longer dated into some shorter dated assets as well, because again, you know, at some stage those um, lo long end yields will rise and you can take a fairly significant hit in terms of the duration. So again, if you're moving shorter, you're kind of preparing your portfolio and kind of almost um, kind of bomb proofing it for any kind of uh, upturn in, in yields as well. So that's what we're talking to our clients about. And yeah, in terms of, um, you know, the yields, uh, that's significantly more attractive than term deposits uh, on on some corporate bonds that are out there, and you know we're trying to open that universe up by bringing on board sterling bonds, some U.S. bonds as well, to give the uh, investors a, a diversified portfolio that isn't always on offer in the Australian bond market. All right, fantastic! Some really good advice there, Mark. We might leave it there. Appreciate your time this morning. Thanks, Thank Anne. you. Mark Bailey joining us there from Fig Securities. Time for a break. Coming up on Market Countdown, more opening calls. Noel Yates from Macquarie Wealth Management joining us next.